I'm Spencer Allen. Um, trying to do a, a presentation here. I'm from BTI 360, small company who's been uh, who does things in the DC area, and I've been uh, working with Gradle oof, since 2008. Uh, got trained by Hans himself back when he was doing the training sessions. Um, actually created the first Wikipedia entry page for Gradle, so I've been around for a while. Little contributions here and there, Jenkins, Gradle plugins, stuff like that, but. Here we're talking about surviving corporate environments with Gradle. This is a corporate environment, get it? <laughs> Old technology, who knows what. Um, you're forced to do things in interesting ways. So let's move along here. And so let's start with the different types of corporations. Corporations with wide open internet access. So maybe Netflix, maybe, but I suspect they still have some kind of firewalls, proxies, who knows, but Gradle folks, they just, Hit the internet, everything's there. Um, cool, this is your uh, build.gradle. That's exactly what it looks like inside of uh, you know, organizations who are not like that. Well, it gets a little bit more. You're probably J Center, and you're setting up the wrapper. Please set up the wrapper. Should be 2.14 now instead of 2.13, but I didn't know if 2.14 was gonna be release candidate 15 or something by the time, like if it was gonna get done before the summit. but. And uh, you should always put in a root project name. And until you're running 3.0, make sure the, the daemon's in there. But we'll talk about the daemon later because the daemon can make your life fun or not fun. All right, so let's go with the, it's a nice proxy, but it's still a proxy. So you're dealing with Gradle, you're like, hey, I just wanna connect to the outside world and you're in your corporation and they say, Great, come use our proxy. So, first thing is, I'm going to uh, set up proxy port and everything. That's what they told me to set it up to. And the key here is that I've done something not quite right. Everything is either gonna completely work or not work at all. So if I screwed up on the proxy, it's gonna work great if I can actually reach the internet. And that's because, does anybody know? No, actually, that's a good guess. Everything is actually HTTPS. Don't read the documentation. It still says Maven's using HTTP, but the wrapper, JCenter, everything. So even though you had everything up there, it looked great. Um, it wasn't actually using those property settings. But it's hard to see on this screen here, but the uh, HTTP non-proxy hosts also ignore the Gradle documentation. Uh, because it says, make that HTTPS. There is no such property. The property is shared across HTTP and HTTPS. So, little mileage there, but uh, this, is, this will get you started. Uh, this gets you, you know, it's just a simple proxy. How hard could it be, right? Spend hours on this. Um, and, that, and that's the thing, you know, follow the Oracle documentation on this, the JDK. Um, Somebody should probably fix it. I should probably put in a bug request or just a pull request for it because these are simple things um, and we're the community, right? You guys all watch the community. You know. All right, but what happens when you have an incorrect proxy? I screwed it up. It never happens. Nobody screws anything up. But if you were to screw anything up, some things are a little bit more interesting. Resolving always fails, but the Gradle wrapper, it's a tenacious little thing. It fails to the proxy, it says, <laughs> it's okay, I'm gonna go to the internet anyway. Um, not really a big deal, it's just kind of amusing. So uh, remember that if uh, you think you've set it up for somebody and you test the wrapper downloads, like, oh, it works great. And then they go and try and use it on one of those closed, you know, disconnected networks and it just doesn't work. Or they have a proxy setting that goes somewhere else and it just doesn't work for them. And they say, didn't you test it? You said, I did. Um, I don't know why they're inconsistent. It's kind of surprising, but the wrapper is custom code in order to use it. Um, these are things that are, you, you might get a call from your security folks saying, why does this thing keep calling out? All right, trust the internet. Oops, oh, that's horrible. I don't know the keys on here. <laughs> My clicker doesn't work either. Ooh but verify. Uh, so you may get this wonderful thing out there called the wrapper, which I mentioned you should be using. 
there is a way to verify what that is. And whether you know it or not, there's this thing called the distribution SHA-256 sum. And it's a really cool thing. It's not published anywhere. So the property is, but the, uh, the SHA signature. So you basically have to download Gradle, run SHA-256 sum against it yourself from a, you know, Linux or Windows, find out what it is, slap it into your thing, and then you can use it. Really, this was uh, designed by a set of people that had to self-compile things or prove to the rest of their corporate company that, yeah, yeah, everything came in, we knew what it was, and it's a great thing. This is actually kind of cool, but you can't actually do this, which is put it inside the wrapper. That doesn't work. This property exists, but only inside the dot property, the gradle-wrapper.properties file. I'm not quite sure why, but it means that it's dangerous to actually define the wrapper task and rerun it, because you'll overwrite that uh, properties file and no longer have this in there. But that's okay. Um, you know, it's not published out there, and you know, running the task is just going to blow it away. So I think this would be a really simple little contribution that somebody could probably think about doing that wouldn't be hard, because I, you, I looked at the code, and it's just missing. <laughs> I mean, it's, you just have to have a property that goes along with the wrapper task, and it passes it down through the configuration for writing out to the file. So this was kind of surprising. I didn't realize it wasn't fully linked up. Uh, but if somebody says you have to do it, uh, the last presentation said, I just go and modify the properties file directly. Well, lots of us do, but there's a reason there's a wrapper task. <sighs> All right. Well, not everybody has a nice proxy. They have what we'll call the nanny state, blacklisted, whitelisted, and, you know, we just don't like your location. So, in order to even connect to the proxy, they said, I have to add in a username and a password. Um, when you're using a username and password, where do these go? There's a great lot of properties that exist inside of your project. Please don't check this one in. This should go, anything that's got uh, username and password should only be in the, uh, the home, Gradle home, uh, Gradle app properties. I can't tell you how many times I've seen it. Somebody decides they just start adding it to the project. And then you're like, you know, we've, we've found the passwords in your project. Please get rid of those. And oh, they're using Git. So it's always fun because like, no. <laughs> Getting rid of the history in there is by definition hard. So. Please don't. And then, so that's, that's easy. Yeah, one never checked into revision control. All right, but we're not done because you can never have too much security, right? You just, just need, ugh. all right. So they said we've got our own certificates because we're just a big corporation. We don't care about VeriSign or any of those other people. We like to sign our own stuff. Now, there are legitimate reasons to do that, but all right. They hand it to you and you go and stick it in and you get this whacked out errors, like, what the heck? You probably can't read this, but it's just complaining, you know, PKX, path building failed, certificate, unable to find valid. That basically says your proxy served up a certificate and Java has no idea where it came from. Uh, not the greatest, maybe we could fix this so that when it sees something like that, it turns it into a useful error message for the user. So the fix for that, Translation, you need a custom trust store. That's really all it's telling you because the default JDK trust, or JRE trust store is just not going to cut it for you. All right. So you should never use relative paths. <laughs> No, it should always be an absolute path to... Yeah, because relative paths... Relative, relative paths do relative not. Uh, yeah, don't, don't, just don't. <laughs> I, I agree, you're right, that is a, that is a casualty. But this is a properties file, there's not really any way to say file relative to project. What is it relative to? I see. Okay. So, and then you're modifying the system properties as they come in. So, so, so when I generate the wrapper, I generate the code, uh, to generate the trust store 
relative property. See, people have even more pain. Uh, generally, we put the trust stores in a fixed location where we know it is per user, and then there's a full path to that. <laughs> now, this actually doesn't work either. Um, <laughs> why? Because it claims that the key store was tampered with. What do you mean the key store was tampered with? Um, there's actually still a latent bug uh, in there that you need to give it a password. Uh, I believe what's happening is that they're supposed to pass null, but I think they're passing the empty string. And the empty string is not the same as not passing a password at all to it. Uh, you're supposed to, so just give it a password, get over it, and work your way to the next error, because there's gonna be another one. You just know it, right? <laughs> of course, receive fatal alert, bad certificate. Wait, what bad certificate? Oh, it's complaining about yours, because not only did they just add their own certificates, they said, yeah, we, we gave you one too, you have to use it. So this is two-way client SSL at its finest. And you're right, fine, I need a key store now for my own client cert. Okay, that one you do want a password every time, so it doesn't really matter. So this, this gradle.properties file is getting longer than some of my build.gradle files, but uh, there are unfortunately situations where people have to live with this all the time and they just get used to filling out this garbage. Um, so, gets big. Now, anybody who's used the daemon, try and stick in certain other system properties. Not all of them take effect. You're sitting there trying to debug why is my certificate not getting used? Oh, let me, I know this property, I'm gonna slam it in there, I'll give it a dash D or I put it in my system properties. Actually, the dash D will work from the command line, but here in the system properties, it decides, yeah, I didn't reload it. So you have to sometimes stop the daemon. Um, they, they know there are a couple things, but this is one of them, and it's annoying as heck. You tell a user, like, it just, here, what, what? Because if you mistype the trust store, you know what Java does? It gives you no errors, no warnings, nothing. It just says, oh, I didn't find one there, so that, you're good. I'm gonna go use the default one. So you really wanna be able to pass in these flags to see what's going on. <sighs> Welcome to corporate America. <laughs> all right, so you've finally done all of those things. You're back to what you think is everybody else who's on the internet. What could possibly go wrong now? <sighs> they blocked plugins.gradle.org. Come on, it's, we're connected to the internet, but we're connected to somebody's internet. And they don't like that one. They, they decided that wasn't awesome. So, maybe no new plugin mechanism for you? Everybody knows at least how to use the apply plugins, build script, class path. We can still do all of that, but I really want to use the new plugins. So, no problem. Let's just go find all the plugins and automatically download them for local usage. Finding all the plugins. How about finding a subset? You can find the ones, you know the cool ones, but you want to keep up to date because, you know, they're changing all the time. I'm going to go use that plugin portal API. Yeah, there is no plugin portal API. <laughs> they may have one someday, but right now there is not. Now, the interesting thing is Bintray does have an API, and the plugin portal is actually hosted in Bintray. They have conflicting information. So when you scrape the stuff from the plugin portal, you'll get all the real plugins for the most part. And you, put, you try and hit the API that's supposedly associated with the uh, Gradle side, the Gradle plugins, and it's about a year and a half out of date for the plugin versions. It's not clear where the metadata broke down. And what's even worse is that, so that's probably it. It's, it it's still, out, the bin tray portion is still out there then. Now, now that you mention that, that makes a little bit more sense. Some plugin authors have not been publishing properly and the latest version is only on bin tray and not in the plugin portal. <laughs> so you're still looking in multiple places. Um, None of the Gradle folks decided to sit in on this set. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> Sorry, one Gradle individual decided to sucker and say, oh, you're a Gradle guy? How long have you been there? Oh, okay. <laughs> I did not recognize your face. All right. <laughs> so there's certainly room for improvement on the plugin portal, but we're not gonna give up. You know, we just wanna get a plugin 
and I, I wrote this when it was 213, so there's this handy dandy, don't try and read this, but there's this really ridiculously long name internal property, which I guess was probably used for testing purposes, that lets you actually point to a location where you can then, you give it the whole Gradle version, plug in, use, it's the whole RESTful API, and then it's awesome. You go and grab all the JSON files, and they all point to HTTPS plugins.gradle.org, which we know plugins.gradle.org is blocked, so we're going to rewrite all the JSONs to point to our own internal repository and upload those. Piece of cake. Um, all right, so we've got options here. You know, I just give up. I don't care. I'm going back to the apply. Or uh, upgrade to 214, and there is the, uh, the, the new publish uh, repository, or plugin repository ability to point to an internal. That currently is still only really good for internally published ones. You still have to rewrite all the uh, outside world ones, the JSON, and shove them up there. Uh, doable, uh, but certainly makes it a little bit harder for, uh, for corporations who don't have full access to the internet. Uh, so I don't really know what the right answer is right now. I know what everybody is really using. They're still using apply plugin. I mean, to be honest, they're just doing the build scripts, but there is some goodness in the, the new plugin model. I hope we can get there someday. All right, so let's assume we got all the plugin repositories. We point to our internal primary, internal.com. We've got repositories, Maven. We're good to go. We did all that republishing and whatnot. Finally, finally, we're, we're, uh, we're going to add in a third party plugin. And we're going to grab, I don't know, I just grabbed one randomly. Fly away. Sure. It works. Awesome. We, we're good. We're perfectly good. Let's add another one. JRuby Gradle. Sure, why not? What could go wrong? Could not head J Center. Where the hell's J Center coming from? Oh, right. There's a bunch of plugins that try to be helpful. They decided that they wanted to add repositories for you because everybody needs a new repository. So you go back to the drawing board and uh, you say, you know, ah. all right, so great. JRuby, this one actually gives you a little default repositories equals false. So they can actually, you can configure it. So it's like, great, they thought about me. This is awesome. I love these guys. Let's try another one. ASCII doctor. Oh, he just left too. You know, Mr. ASCII doctor. Um, we're going to have fun with this one. Yeah, must be another extension property. There is. ASCII doctor J has a no default repositories equals true. Sweet. It's not the same as the other one, but we can still use it. We, we can make this work inside our corporation. <sighs> what? No default repositories for object of type ASCII doctor extension. Anybody have any idea what this is? <laughs> Try again. It's even more insidious than that. It only showed up in ASCII doctor 153. Why is that a problem? 153 is not in the plugin portal. It only exists on bin tray. <laughs> so it's like I went to go and try and download it from the plugin portal. 151 is the only is the latest one that was up in the plugin portal. So fine, fine. Versions of plugins are not always consistent everywhere. I can still beat this in a submission. So you know what? I don't care. I'm going to take any random plugin, and some of them don't even have anything to apply. So I had copied down the ASCII doctor, and, and I made it work. You know, you can you can get the latest version from Bintray. Spring Boot conventions, pretty you know, Spring Boot's pretty cool. There's nothing. It, it it reaches out, it puts a new repository out there for you, and you're just like, I'm fed up with this. This is, I'm, yeah. So go into your settings.gradle, and then. Put in what you believe should be the only repositories in there and grab each project and iterate through them. This uh, dot all, if somebody was in the previous session, there's a repository just like there is on, just about everything has a dot all collection which will grab everything that's already in there and anything that gets added later. So you, you set this in there and you can go through there and you remove all those URLs because they were just so helpful for you. All right, so your comparison gives you one last thing, one last restriction. 
you know, no more jumping off the bridge. That's your corporate retention policy. That's, you know, that's pretty much it. You, you've made it all the way through your first day of working at Corporation XYZ, and already your Gradle file, you didn't get anything written yet. You were just trying to make the first apply one single plugin that wasn't, you know, like third-party plugin work. You pulled in like the Nebula plugins. These things are awesome. And actually, they don't pull in other repositories. But th this is the kind of stuff that uh, we have the advantage of learning if you're in certain environments. Uh, I actually had other types of things that I decided not to present on because I thought that they were going to be in some of the other discussions um, where you have no internet access and you can't even get a hold of this stuff. But uh, the good thing is, the great thing is, you can do it all in Gradle. Uh, the bad thing is, it's not turnkey. So uh, that's pretty much all I have. I don't even know what time it is. I had. So, several of these will probably just, uh, the plugin portal API has been a wish list for over, well, a very long time. <laughs> the um, plugin authors not doing things for you, I don't know how to, you know, you basically need to just write something. That, that little piece of custom code just kind of has to stick around. So the original submission process was supposed to go and test the plugins at some point against different versions of Gradle, different versions, different environments. And I believe there's still an intent that they would love to do that, but there's resource constraints. Now, unfortunately, right now, the plugin portal is one of the few things that the community cannot really contribute to. If there were an API, then we could have something peering at it, pull down things, and do them externally. But right now, it's very cumbersome. It's, it's, it's an opaque API. It's basically, you can call it internals. Uh, you're, you're, you're troweling through JSON files, which is kind of an API, but it's not supposed to be used by anything other than the tool. And you're just going through HTML files to find all the plugins because there, there isn't any other way to query for them. You just kind of have to dig through them. Uh, I mean, you can query based on certain named characteristics, but if you wanted to pipeline something that went through all the latest plugins and confirmed that they still worked, and you can grab them, snatch them, bring them into your environment, there isn't a, it's certainly possible. I mean, we can automate anything, and I, I wrote some scripts that, that did parse through the, uh, the current existing HTML, and that was a screen scraping API. It's possible. But until a public API exists, yes, we can just ask and say, is, is there any way to, to do that? Define the feature. So you're talking like uh, on the um, forum discussion? Or are you talking in the developers? So they're actually. So there's the design proposals, yes. Some of these are small enough that it wouldn't be. In fact, one of them I did find on the discussions, which was the, they upgraded the HTTP client, which was supposed to fix the um, trust store issue about not having to require a password. Um, but I didn't know that it was still broken until I tested it myself. Uh, I thought maybe 2.14 had fixed it, 2.13 or something. Uh, it didn't, which implies to me that there's something else. So. Some of them are known issues, because what it was, somebody's claimed it was a problem, and then there was a, hey, did it get fixed, and the person that tested it never responded after that. So yeah, shame on us from the community. <laughs> um, but the, the feature wish list, I guess, is, yeah, how do you, you could say, take a, and this is, this is firewall environment. This isn't even the worst kind of constraints, um, but it's, it's one of the more cumbersome to, to get novice people into place. So, yes, and I was going to do everything offline, and again, I looked at other presentations and thought that it, 
a non-connected network was going to do a lot of those things, and I didn't want to have people, I'm already going to bore you enough with what I talked about. I didn't want to bore you with something you might have already heard in another session. <laughs> and I think I lost, no, no, it's still there. Yes? No. Uh, that is a specific, well, So external dependencies in, in Maven land already have a MD5 and a SHA-1 next to them. Uh, but the, the wrapper distribution can have one, but it's not published anywhere. Um, so somebody could, might argue an MD5 and a SHA-1 are no longer good enough, but that's a different thing. I have not confirmed whether or not the SHA-1s and the MD5s are validated upon downloads. I really don't know. Uh, but they're certainly part of the model, standard model. Um, good question, though. I, I really think, so the Gradle wrapper is awesome. In fact, the Maven community has decided they're going to create one, well, they have one, an unofficial one, but I, it, it would be cool if the, the Gradle wrapper was considered out of the box even more secure and more awesome. Because somebody can publish what the, in fact, at one time, several years ago, there was a SHA-1 signature for the zip distributions that was put onto the raw site. But you can't get to that anymore to see what's there. It used to be just posted on a website. If you knew the exact URLs, you could find everything in the directory. Um, but I think, I don't know when they stopped. And I think it was just manually constructed. It wasn't part of a, an automation. So. Everybody's tired. Just let me go, right? <laughs> I don't know what time it is, how far over, how... I want to make it short. I want to make it like 30 minutes, 35. What time is it? Oh, then I, then, okay. I blew through it because I didn't know how much time I was doing here. So if there are no other questions, please go and enjoy the rest of your stay, and you have no more presentations. <laughs>